Welcome everybody. Happy Monday. Hello Kim, how are you doing? Hi Cecilia. We are starting a brand new week. How was your weekend guys? What are you grateful for today? Hi Becca, how are you doing? You are grateful for your son. Happy afternoon from Germany. Cut your hair Emilio. Yeah, my wife cut my hair and I shaved my face. It was about time. <laughs> Nice to see you guys all here. Let's just so all like do this with our hands and then take a couple of deep breaths. Just shake your hands like this. It really helps to move the energy. Grateful for the last weekend, sunny with lots of nature. Amazing, Christine. No more hippie, haha. <laughs> it will come back, Cecilia, don't worry. It's a little bit too short for my taste, but it's fine. So I'm very excited today uh, for today's session. Uh, minimalism, yeah, I am decluttering my hair. <laughs> grateful for Inside Timer. Yeah, Marisa, me too. Very grateful to have a platform that allows us to be here. Are there any new people to my live session today? Any person who is the first time uh, here with me? I'm always curious to know if there is someone. Um, if yes, just say me. Uh, and I'm connecting from Canada. I'm originally from Barcelona, Spain, but I live in Canada. I lived here since 2012. And my mission in life is to make intentional living fun simple and available to every person on the planet okay and today's topic it's about this book and i would like to know uh, if you guys have heard of this book it's from julie morgaston organizing from the inside out organizing from the inside out by julie morgaston and it's a book from 1998, I believe it was the first edition. Okay, uh, I have it from years ago. <laughs> so it, it's, a, it's an old book, right? But still the, the method inside, it's still very relevant. And trust me that uh, she was a big influence in myself, in my own practice of helping people declare and organize. And after doing like over 300 in-home sessions with people, I can tell you that this method is very efficient, very effective. It's really well designed and I always get results. I, uh, the method that we have, we always tweak it a little bit. Uh, we are influenced, my wife and I, we, do, we work together with people and we always are influenced by different people. And depending on the specific moment, we will use some techniques on another. But the, the framework that I'm about to share about this book, it's, uh, it's very efficient, okay? So new to me, I have it from years. Uh, I am sorry. I don't know why you're sorry for Kim. I read that years ago. Okay, so the book starts with, uh, with some misconceptions that I would like to share with you because I find them very helpful and very eye-opening. The and majority of the times people are not aware of them and they are very, very simple but so simple that sometimes the most simplest things uh, elude us, right? Uh, don't really think about them. But one of them is organizing is a mysterious talent, okay? Some lucky people are born with it, while others like you are left to suffer. So that's one misconception that the book shares. And this is something that many people believe, okay? Do you guys believe this? Do you guys believe that organizing is something that some people are born with that skill, but then other people will never have it? Uh, because if that's you, I have good news to you. Like organizing is a skill, okay? And a skill can be learned. Everybody can learn a new skill anytime in their lives. And organizing is a skill. <laughs> I don't have it. Christine, you can learn it, okay? So that's the first one. The second one, 
getting organized is an overwhelming, hopeless chore. Okay, so for those of you who are feeling like that, okay, uh, Kim says, I think some are better at it than others. Kim, some are better at it than others because they have practiced it more, because they had put more time and effort into it, because maybe they had the opportunity to, fa to have someone in their lives to show them options, right? Maybe some people didn't have that opportunity. Some people were raised in homes where organization wasn't the norm. And it's not because their parents were bad. It's because maybe their parents didn't have exposure to being organized either, right? So you cannot give to someone something that you don't have yourself. And if you never learned yourself how to be organized because no one taught you, you cannot transfer the skills to someone else because you don't have them yourself. And that's why I'm doing this session today. That's why I'm always live here on Inside Timer, because I want you guys to learn this. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how bad the situation is. Every present moment, every present moment, it's an opportunity for you to start doing something different. Okay? You have helped me uh, make it less daunting. Thank you, Cecilia. My mom and siblings are well organized, but not me. Okay, Polly, that's fine. Sometimes we are not a reflection of our parents and sometimes we are quite the opposite because we reveal ourselves uh, to what we have at home. So that's another whole story, right? So another one, it's impossible to stay organized. <laughs> okay, it's impossible to stay organized. Another one, organizing is a non-productive use of time. People in my workshops often say to me, I want to get organized. I try to get organized, but I always feel like I should be doing more important things with my time. Okay. How do you feel about that? Do you think that organizing is a waste of time? Do you find yourself saying, I don't have time to get organized now because I have other things that are more important. Okay. But then those things that are more important, maybe you are not doing them efficiently. Maybe uh, they are not flowing the way they are supposed to. Maybe you are taking way more time than it, it's, it's required because you didn't allow yourself time to, to reflect, to analyze the steps and then to make it more efficient, right? And then you, if you repeat a task like that often, then you are wasting a lot of time. And it doesn't matter if you waste time or not. What really matters is how you feel, okay? If it takes a lot of time for you to do a task, but you don't care about it and it's not frustrating you, that's fine. You don't have to optimize it if you don't want to. But when you are feeling frustrated, that's when you may benefit from doing this. Okay. Organizing helps you do the other things well and efficiently. Yeah. Once you are organized, then you have more time for fun things. Absolutely. Oh, that's what we are trying to do here, guys. I'm not trying to impose on you to get organized in areas that you don't need or you don't want or you don't feel like it. I am inviting you to analyze the things that you are frustrated with. Okay. Analyzing the things that you deep inside know, I think I'm wasting a lot of time here. And this is something that I don't like doing, but I have to do it. Like I have to cook my meals. I have to do my dishes. I have to do the laundry. I have to go to work. I have to, you have to do specific things uh, in life. If you cannot delegate them, if you cannot have someone to help you with them. Okay. You, you do them yourself, but some things you love them, doing them. Some things you just do them because they are maintenance. They, they are necessary things. Okay. When I start organizing, it's like it never stops. We will talk about that, Kim. Don't worry. Okay. So the, the three steps that this book is going to cover. Okay. It's divided in three steps. The first step is analyze. Okay, step one, analyze. And this is analyzing your situation, right? Step two is going to be strategize. Okay, strategize, create a strategy. And the step three is going to be attack. Okay, actually taking action. And inside of, of these steps, we're going to dive deeper into what's, what's entitled on each step. But I want you to remember the framework. Okay, there are three steps. Analyze, strategize, and attack. 
Okay, and if someone wants to write those steps in the in the chat, uh, please do so that people can read them. But step one is analyze, step two is strategize, and step three is attack. Okay, so we are going to start with the step that is the analyze. Okay, and the first thing that they start with, uh, that she starts with Yuli, with this, it's uh, defining what's holding you back. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Kay. Okay, so what's holding you back? Because when you are analyzing your situation, you are really becoming aware of what's going on in my life, what's going on in my home, why do I have clutter, why can't I get organized and stay organized? So you have to look at all those things before getting started, right? Because if you don't, if you don't really understand what's going on, it's very difficult for you to actually take steps to change because you don't know what you need to change, okay? So the book talks about what's holding you back, okay? And there are different things that can hold you back, okay? But you need to understand them. So the book talks about technical errors is one thing that is holding you back. So basically just simple organization things that, that are not set properly, that if you change that technical thing, the system is gonna be better. It talks about level two will be external realities, okay? So basically something in your environment that is making the organization being difficult. Maybe it can be living with someone else, maybe it can be uh, like different environmental reasons, right? Maybe you have a very small space and you don't have homes for everything. So that can cause the clutter. And the, the, the next one is the psychological obstacles. And I will say that that's probably one of the most important ones, the psychological obstacles, right? So these are stuff that you have inside, like all habits, all beliefs, all ways of doing things that are no longer serving you, but you are so familiar with them that you just keep repeating them over and over and you just can't get out of them. Okay, so those are some of the of the things that 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 you have to look at. So, for example, some of the things to be more specific items that don't have a home. So that's a, a, a technical error that if you find yourself having in your home a lot of items that don't have a permanent home, that means that if I have this thing, for example, in my in my room and I don't have a place to put it back when I'm tidying up my room and every time I put this down, I put it somewhere else and I don't have a permanent home for it, what's gonna happen is that first, I don't know where to put it and that causes me stress. Second, when I need to find it, I don't know what it is because I don't remember if I put it every time in a different location, you will get frustrated because you won't find it. And that's when you start buying duplicates and then you start forming piles of things everywhere and you just forget where things are. Okay, so items not having a home is a big one. Inconvenient storage is another one. So you have something that you use on a regular basis and it is stored in a place that is not convenient to grab it. It's kind of difficult and frustrating. And the experience this happens, for example, imagine that you are in the kitchen, you want to bake a, a beautiful cake, okay? You can connect with what, Lenore? Are you talking about the permanent homes or are you talking about the inconvenient storage? I'm gonna talk about the inconvenient storage. Imagine that you are in your kitchen, okay? Oh, permanent homes, okay, Lenore. Imagine, let's say that you are in your kitchen, okay? Let's go, we all have a kitchen, okay? And then you have stuff in your countertops. You have plates, you have bowls, you have coffee mugs, you have calorie. So you need to find a permanent home for all those things. In my kitchen, for example, if I stand in front of the sink, I open this door, the mugs go here. I open this door, the plates go here. I open this door, the coffee mugs go there. I open the second drawer on the right and my calorie is always there. So when I put things back, everything has a home. Everything has a permanent place. Calorie with calorie, plates, dishes, everything. And when I finish tidying up my kitchen, there is nothing on the countertops. Everything is put away. Put away in its home, in its permanent spot, okay? So the process that we are going to do involves creating a permanent home for everything, okay? 
What's holding you back? Technical errors. Thank you, Kate, for typing those, okay? Another error is creating a confusing system, a system that you have in place, but it's confusing. You don't really understand the steps, okay? And so because it's confusing, you don't follow it. This happens a lot with paper, for example, with paperwork, guys. You have your filing cabinet or you have piles of paper on your desk. And if you don't have a clear system that you feel comfortable and you understand, you will never be able to put those papers away. OK, that's one great example for papers. Uh, organizing is boring. Sometimes we have that mentality like I don't want to organize because it's boring and you are lacking the connection with your outcome, the connection with that final goal of when I get organized, then I will be able to do X. I will be able to feel this way. I will be able to. And then connecting with that is really important because if not, organizing is just a chore that you just don't want to do. We don't want to do it. This is me with paperwork. I try my best because I like it all organized. So, okay, maybe you have a good system in place, uh, but sometimes if it's a system that is confusing, then uh, it's very difficult to follow it, okay? Unrealistic workload, that's another one. We try to achieve a task that is gonna require a little bit of time and we are over optimistic. And then we get started thinking that we're gonna get it done in, in 30 minutes or an hour and then it takes longer than that. And then that doesn't work because then you feel frustrated, you feel like you have felt. So these are some of the things that are errors that are things that you have to look at to be able to understand your situation okay and then some of the psychological obstacles that i was talking about are some people have a need for abundance okay a need for abundance because their physical items kind of show them who they are they are their identity some other people like having the abundance because they need something to do and that makes them feel in control. This is something that sometimes is difficult to understand, but a lot of the times some people are afraid of decluttering and organizing because when you are done, then what? I don't know if you guys are connecting with this, but some people are afraid of what's next because when they declutter and organize and everything is good, then they have to face the reality of what am I supposed to do now? What's next for me? Okay. And that's scary for some people. And they decide to stay. They decide to self-sabotage themselves to stay in that mess, in that clutter, because it is familiar, because it gives them something to do, because it just feels right. And doing the work is scary because they don't know what's next for them. And they are afraid of the uncertainty of it. This is some people feel that way, okay? Another one is conquistador of chaos. Some people enjoy doing the process. Some people enjoy going from a mess to a place of order. But then when they are finished, again, they lose their purpose and then they want to do it again. So the only way for them to do it again is to create another mess to do it again. And this is another cycle that some people go through. Another one, another psychological obstacle is goals and clear goals and priorities. Okay, so this means that you get started with the process, but you are not clear about what do you expect from this process at the end of it. Okay, so once you are finished, what are you hoping for? And if you don't have clear goals and priorities, what's going to happen is that you're going to get started, you're going to pull things out. And then you are going to have a hard time moving through the process because first you won't be able to make confident decisions because you're going to be facing like, okay, I have this. Uh, do I need it? Uh, I don't know. Do, do I want it? I don't know. So you need to have the clarity about, okay, I'm organizing my home because I want to be able to exercise. I want to be able to cook properly in my kitchen. I want to be able to tidy up really quickly. I want to be able to paint. I want to be able to whatever that is for you. Once you have that clarity, that's when you can attack the clutter and make confident decisions. OK, I chase girls. Will it stop after meditating? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, 
So need to retreat, uh, fear, fear of losing creativity. So there are a lot of ones that she shares here in the book. Need for distraction is another one that, that Julie says that some people face. Uh, disliking the space is another one. Uh, sentimental attachment, I think that's a huge one for majority of us. You just are sentimentally attached to the things that you have and you just don't know how to move forward. You don't know how to let them go. You are grieving uh, because those items are triggering something on you and it's very difficult to move through the process, okay? Yeah, sentimental attachment, I would say probably is one of the biggest ones for majority of the people, especially when we are talking about items that belong to family members that are no longer with us. Uh, and then we just hold them because we want to keep that person with us, those memories with us. And then when the volume of those items is big, it becomes a big problem because you don't have enough space to store them. Okay. That attachment resonates loudly with me, Catherine. Yeah, we all have that. And uh, sometimes it's very difficult to go through that. Okay, so these are some of the of the psychological obstacles that the book talks about and it dives deeper into each of them. But I just find it very interesting, right? To like shine the light on all of them because some of you may resonate with one, not with the other one, but some of you may think, wow, I never thought that I like creating order out of chaos and when I am finished, I need to do it again. So if I don't have a mess, I won't be able to do that, that again and then I will feel a little bit lacking purpose. So maybe you find yourself in that cycle and maybe you have to explore different options, different things to do rather than decluttering that give you the same thrill, right? Again, everybody's going to be in a different situation, but it's important to share these things so that you can uh, feel if that's you or if, if that's not you, okay? So there is a chapter about living or working with a disorganized person. And this is something that many of you may be facing, right? Living with someone that is not at the same level as you, meaning they don't care about organization or they have clutter, but they don't, they are not backed by that clutter and you are like frustrated with that clutter. So when that happens in the same house, uh, yeah, so the, there are a few things that the book shares that I think are interesting. Okay, so things that you should know about when you are trying to work with someone that, that is not uh, organized and maybe they don't want to be organized. So the first thing that says the book says you cannot motivate someone else to get organized. Okay, so you cannot motivate someone else to get organized. This is something that I agree kind of because you can influence them by you doing something that they feel inspired by. Okay, but you have to do the journey first yourself. You cannot tell someone, oh, you have to organize that room because it's a mess. No, you have to do first your own spaces and then hopefully that.